All right, this is Joe Johnson of Cancer Dudes Live More, and today I have a special guest with me, Elaine Canton, who is the author of the book, The Canton Ketogenic Diet for Cancer, Type 1 Diabetes, and Other Ailments, which is uh, now in the top 15 bestsellers on Amazon in the book specifically about cancer. So I'm very excited to have Elaine here with me today, and she's going to share a little bit about her story and about her book. Now, uh, Elaine is is someone who recovered from cancer using a little bit unusual diet, something that you might not have heard of. So I'm I'm very happy to have her today to tell us about it. So thanks for coming and joining me, Elaine. Thank you. The pleasure is all mine, Joe. Thank you very much for having me. Um, um, so what, what can you tell us a little bit about your story and, and how, you know, how your cancer developed and, and what that was like for you? That was in, uh, 2010 that I was diagnosed with breast cancer, very aggressive, uh, cancer that was estrogen progesterone positive. And I was told that, um, I needed to have a lumpectomy ASAP. Within a week I had surgery. And uh, also, um, I was pushed uh, chemo and radiation. They told me that within uh, no time, I would have it in my bones and my vital organs mm-hmm. if I didn't have aggressive treatments of chemo and radiation. And I refused to that scare me. Mm-hmm. Um, I started researching online, and um, I learned about uh, Dr. Kobe that was an inoculating patient with toxin to produce fever. And I just click, I link the fever with the ketone, and um, I linked it to type 1 diabetes. When my son was sick with a fever, and he became um, like he was cured all of a sudden without the need for insulin when he had a high ketone, uh, and he was not um, eating because he was ill. Um, so I link all the fever, the the disease and stuff to the ketone and the ketogenic diet and epilepsy for healing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I researched more and more and everything made sense. Um, I find the research or study paper from a doctor, um, Thomas Seafred from Boston Medical College, Mm -hmm. and he uh, really proved and even further um, put the information that was missing to uh, Otto Warburg, that was a Nobel Prize winner in the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. Um, and he showed that cancer is a metabolic disease and that um, cancer cells has a defect in them. They're not able to process fat to multiply to survive, but healthy cells, they can and they thrive on fat. Mm-hmm. So if you do a ketogenic diet, you switch your body to burning fat for fuel, mm-hmm. and you starve the cancer that way. Mm-hmm. And you're feeding your body with food, and you're feeding your healthy stuff. So I created my own ketogenic diet, removing all the major allergens, like including dairy. So I do a uh, model based on Dr. Atkins' diet with a combination of high fat and high protein versus low carb to remove the allergen, and I optimize the diet for, um, for health. Mm-hmm. Um, for somebody like me that had a compromised immune system. And um, so I had the lumpectomy, I refused all the, the toxic treatments, and about six months after, uh, for a regular checkup, I had a lump that was growing um, in between my two breasts, close to my sternum bone, and it was sticking out, it was very hard. My oncologist said it was con- consistent with cancer and that it was recurrent in the same area that I had my lumpectomy, and he sent me to the surgeon again. Well, before I got to the surgeon, I performed the appointment, I started eating my ketogenic diet, very strict. And when I got to the surgeon, it was practically almost gone, and um, the sonogram showed that it was not cancer. She took a biopsy, a needle biopsy, and it showed that there was no cancer left. Mm-hmm. So she assumed that the oncologist made a mistake and that, um, you know, it, it was just like an hematoma or something like that because she told me that cancer could not shrink. Mm-hmm. So I was in remission for two years, and um, back again this past uh, March, um, during a routine exam, 
my oncologist found something uh, hard, but this time it was more inside my breath, and I had big breath, so I it was hard to detect, you know. Mm -hmm. And he sent me to the surgeon, and um, the ultrasound showed that I had something. She said that was about 10 centimeter uh, large on my upper quadrant and my left breast, mm -hmm. and she sent it for biopsy. She biopsied the lump, the largest lump, and um, it came back positive for the same type of cancer that I initially had in mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. She told me that I had advanced cancer and I told her I wanted to wait uh, for at least a month and then I would go see her again. And um, she told me there was no diet that could take care of it. <laughs> so I do my diet very strict and um, a month and four days after I went to see her, I went for a CT scan and a bone scan. And the doctor had assumed that it would have spread elsewhere because she also told me that I had lymph node invasion again, which was the, the case in the first place. So she assumed that it was, that's what she seemed to assume, that it was spread because they had told me initially if I refused the treatment, they would be everywhere in my body. Mm -hmm. But um, the CT scan and the bone scan a month and four days after it was proven that it was cancer, showed that I had nothing left. There was only a very small nodule in the middle of my breast, but they could not uh, confirm that it was cancer, they said. Mm -hmm. And the thing that was 10 centimeter long was completely gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, the ketogenic diet is called metabolic therapy. Using the defect with the fat, it starves the cancer and it works. Mm -hmm. And I take a lot of supplements. I make sure I keep my body alkaline. I drink alkaline water. I have um, filter that removes the toxin in the water, like the chlorine, the chlorine, the pesticide, the fluoride, and that makes my water alkaline as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I use a lot of uh, spices and herbs and supplements like seaweeds or raw seaweeds I eat and stuff to um, to help my body, my pH, um, the alkaline. And I also, like I told you, I remove the allergen to make sure that if I have some kind of intolerance or um, allergic reaction, which makes the body acidic, that I remove that as well. Mm -hmm. I took kind of the most precaution to give me the most chances to survive. So basically, that's it. And uh, also, I have the son that I told you that I told you that I linked the the diet to type one diabetic. My son is type one diabetic, mm -hmm. and uh, I use the diet on him, and um, he's able to eat without needing any insulin and um, for food or for um, you know dropping down the blood sugar because. It's the normal range. It's just that the diet is very hard to comply with. For a teenager, he doesn't want to do the diet, mm. but the diet works. Mm. And there's other people, too, that are saying they got a insulin with the diet now. Mm -hmm. And so, so in just a month of, of being on the diet, your tumor was 10 centimeters, and then it shrunk down to nothing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, thank God for ketones and ketogenic diet because mm -hmm. I'm here it's been three years um, I never had any chemo I never had any radiation mm -hmm. and this is based on science I don't know if you saw in um, the beginning of June 2013 um, there's a research that came out from the uh, University of South Florida from Dr. D'Agostino and others mm -hmm. and um, Dr. Dominic D'Agostino shows that a uh, ketogenic diet um, along with oxygen therapy mm -hmm. um, extends life in metastatic cancer, which is something that usually cannot be um, conquered. Mm -hmm. Extends life like amazing. Mm -hmm. So that came out on June 5th um, from um, University of South Florida. Mm -hmm. That was published in uh, PLOS One, PLOS One. Um, journal mm -hmm. and um, that's peer-reviewed science mm -hmm. and there's a lot of other science also that's kind of long or that came back from far back mm -hmm. um, like dr d'agostino was also uh, interviewed on uh, cbn.com uh, last uh, i think it was december or around there mm -hmm. and um, he explains the the 
the flaws in the cancer cells that cannot process fat. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in addition to the diet and, and filtering your water and uh, taking, you know, some of those supplemental foods like the seaweeds and things, were you doing any other therapies or, or anything like that? No, I just make sure my um, my body would stay alkaline the mm -hmm. most possible. And um, something important also is um, I try to make peace inside of myself and believe in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Remove any doubts, you know. I told you the doctor told me there was no diet that could do this. Mm -hmm. I just put her in our energy bowl. I put myself in my positive energy right. center. And... Um, you know, I do breathing, I do um, kind of meditation, mm -hmm. I like Wayne Dyer, mm -hmm. and I just put myself in this positive energy and positive thinking, I eliminate the negative, mm -hmm. and um, I just put calm inside myself, because stress also makes you acidic, and acidic means less oxygen or no oxygen, and cancer grows more aggressively in an environment that's mm -hmm. acidic, mm -hmm. and um you give yourself um, oxygen through, you know, relaxing, through your food, through your supplements, mm -hmm. and you're, um, you know, starving the cancer, mm -hmm. with the fat. And also, um, one thing I forgot to tell you that's very important, I only use healthy fats in my diet, mm -hmm. like coconut oil, um, extra virgin coconut oil, extra virgin organic olive oil, right. uh, stuff that's been shown to be uh, beneficial for the cardiovascular system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, coconut oil, olive oil, that's all great stuff and that I recommend to people as well. And uh, so it's its interesting, you, you mentioned about the acid and alkaline, and I just wrote an article about this, but, um, you know, we hear a lot of the times that meat will make you acidic and things like that, but this wasn't the case for you. Um, when you're eating, um, you know, a regular diet, that's one thing. But when you're on a ketogenic diet, when you're on the diet for a certain amount of time, your body goes into what they call homeostasis. Mm -hmm. And when the body goes into homeostasis, it's like your body goes in, into a protection mode, kind of, mm -hmm. like a combat mode for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. And um, then all your levels in your body goes to kind of close to normal, mm -hmm. including the hormones and stuff. So... Um, when you're on a ketogenic diet, that's an exception to the rule as eating meat when you're not using ketone and you're burning glucose on a regular standard American diet. Mm -hmm. So that's the variation here. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you know, I eliminated stuff like um, dairy. That's a big source of lactic acid. Mm -hmm. I eat a lot of fish that has the omega-3, the good uh, kind of fat and right. stuff. And so um, there's better protein from the, the, the meat, and there's worse one. The worst one I eliminated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely eliminating the dairy protein is because is, that can be problematic for many people, definitely. Right. is is very important. Um, but now I believe I had heard as well that you... When you first had the cancer, you had tried a, a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet or something, right? And that didn't work for you? Well, um, I try eating a lot of vegetable mm -hmm. and fruits and um, very little meat. And mm -hmm. uh, my cancer was very aggressive mm -hmm. and it kept growing. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, within six months, I had this thing that was about round like this. Right. And uh, it was sticking out, so it was easy to feel the first time mm -hmm. unless... Um, well, the first time I had a lumpectomy, the second time when it came in, the first time that I um, got rid of it, I mean, with the diet, mm -hmm. uh, which was the second time I had cancer. Right. And then the third time, it was more inside, and it was not sticking out so much, so it was harder to detect. Mm -hmm. But um, the um, the diet is, is what did it for me. Mm, okay, sure. And that was, was, did you have a transition period? How long did it take you to get into ketosis on, on the diet? Do you know? Or? Um, when I start really um, strong, when you're eating, it takes about within 48 hours you get the ketone. Mm -hmm. If you start with a fast, about 24 hours is faster if you don't eat. Okay. But um, if you start um, then with eating food, then it's about 48 hours. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And did you have the experience too, uh, for the first week or two that your energy is lower? Um, I can't remember because I do the diet so often now, mm-hmm. but when I do the diet, what I can tell you is that I have more energy mm-hmm. and I, um, I can do more stuff. And mm-hmm. the more, when you have cancer, you have kind of like a, um, a general fatigue, like you want to do all these things, but your body won't fall yeah, over right. and you're tired. Right. And like when the cancer starts leaving your body, it's like the energy comes back, you um, you feel it, you just feel better, you mm-hmm. feel better not just physically, but mentally too, you're stronger, you're like less, um, you know, I, I, it's hard to expl- explain, but you boost it with the vitamin and the food, mm-hmm. and you smile, and you're happy, mm-hmm. and it's just, when you have cancer, it's harder physically, mentally, and stuff, and then right. it leaves you when it, everything goes better. Yeah, right, right. So definitely figuring out what diet is right for you, it's, it sounds like, was key in your case. And also, you know, not not listening to the doctors if the doctor is saying that nutrition doesn't matter, diet doesn't matter. Exactly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so what, you know, you mentioned uh, a few things about the diet, but what do you usually eat over the course of a day? What does that usually look like for you? Um For uh, tonight, I made uh, some chicken wings. I uh, bought some um, some chicken wings that are not processed from Costco that have no hormones and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I um, I add a lot of um, spices. I call it my magic spices, like mm-hmm. turmeric on it, uh, basil, garlic, mm-hmm. um, healthy salt. Like um, I use the pink and Malayan yep. sea salt, pepper and cardamom or, you know, I use the spices that I want. I could put a little bit of um, slices of lemon on it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I cook that for like an hour. Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm eating tonight with Mm -hmm. some um, probably broccoli Mm -hmm. or cauliflower. And so this is an example. I eat a lot of eggs and same thing. If I scramble the eggs, I put a lot of um, spices and herbs in it. Mm -hmm. And... um, I like to drink hot water with uh, fresh lemon, mm-hmm. or um, I slice some fresh um, slices of turmeric and ginger in it, mm-hmm. so it gives it a, a good taste, and then um, you can eat it after you're done drinking the water. It mm-hmm. gives it a flavor, but also you can um, eat the raw organic turmeric. Mm-hmm. And um, I eat a lot of um, you know organic uh, vegetable. And um, very careful for, um, you know, hormones or to avoid any growth hormones, any GMO. Mm-hmm. I stay away from that. Yep. Um, because the GMOs um, can be toxic. They're linked to cancer via several research now. And mm-hmm. uh, also, um, per um, the director at the Food Safety in San Francisco, it can cause brand new allergen, and again, allergen uh, reaction makes your body acidic. So, mm-hmm. stay away from anything like that. Right. So, really focusing on those good quality organic and grass-fed yeah. proteins and meats and eggs and the good vegetables, okay. cancer-fighting vegetables, and the herbs and spices, turmeric and basil, oregano, all those great spices that are known to fight cancer. And then, like you mentioned, the, the good quality fats, coconut oil, olive oil, things like that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, I, go ahead. Pay attention to details, the little details. They pay off because I'm still here. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> exactly. That's great. <laughs> and uh, so what's, you know, what, what's been the response to your book, um, how, how has that been going for people? Have people been trying out the diet themselves, and what's been their results with it? Yes, some people write. There's one man that posted that um, the diet works. He tried it for his wife that was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was scheduled for um, surgery. I think he said she had lumpectomy. And um, they still went with the lumpectomy, but the lump had shrunk a lot. Mm -hmm. So the surgery was less invasive. And also he said if they had postponed the surgery for a week, the thing would probably have been completely Uh gone. There's a lady that said she had severe uh, abdominal pain. um, And uh, 
the doctors couldn't find what was wrong with her, and she's a uh, diabetic. She was uh, insulin dependent. She was a type two diabetic. This one, and she said the diet is hard to follow, which is true because you can't go to McDonald's or the fast food and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, but she said her pain was completely gone, practically almost, mm -hmm. and uh, she was completely completely off insulin, so she said it was well worth it for her. Mm -hmm. um, there's an, an amazing lady on my um, support group that um, also was diagnosed terminal, and um, she said she had no evidence of disease, and also that she had a, um, a um, almost terminal kidney failure, that she was close to be put on dialysis, they told her, and they told her there was nothing to be done with it, and um, that would just happen. And um, completely after she said she did the diet, she's been on the ketogenic diet for a year, and uh, her kidneys are completely cured. Mm -hmm. So there's there was some study also that came out a while back that said that they were investigating ketogenic diet for replacing dialysis, and for her, um, it worked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of stories like that. There's like a, a family, a mother tells me that um, she has her mother, the grandma, on um, my ketogenic diet. So the family is eating the same kind of like the grandma who has cancer. The grandma's doing better. But, um, you know, the little girl who's six years old has epilepsy and now the teachers tell her she's better in school or mm -hmm. seizures are practically gone. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Just incredible stories and incredible how powerful food can be. Exactly. Food is the most important. Mm -hmm. What we put in our body is um, either poison or it's the best thing for our health. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And everybody has different needs as well, so everybody really needs to figure out what is right for them as an individual. Correct. Some people are low, let's say, on vitamin B12, so they need that nutrient from either food or supplements, and somebody else is something else. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're exactly right for that, too. Mm -hmm. And so, now you mentioned uh, when the cancer came back most recently, you felt that it had a lot, of do, lot to do with stress. Is that right? Yes. My mom got very sick. I worked a lot of hours at work, so I was stressed to the mass. I was sleep deprived, mm -hmm. and um, that's kind of a wake up call to make you realize that you need to take care of yourself, mm -hmm. and you need to put your needs first, and you need to take care of yourself if you want to be any good for anybody else. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a good lesson, and uh, that's part of healing and staying healthy, being good to yourself. Um, we come with a physical body, we also have emotion and spiritual, and we need to, to have everything in balance in our, um, in our person, in mm -hmm. our spiritual person, in our mind, in our thinking, in mm -hmm. our body, in our food, physically, and um, everything works together. Mm -hmm. So that was a, uh, like a wake-up call that I need to to do more for myself and just, you know, forget about myself and mm. help others because I won't be able to help anybody if I'm no good for nothing. Exactly, yeah. So putting your own needs first and taking care of yourself and then that enables you to have more to give to everybody around you. More energy, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and stress also makes the body acidic. So you want to try and be calm and avoid stress at all costs. And that's something that's hard to do when somebody's been diagnosed with a, a very serious illness like cancer, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because they scare you when you go to the doctor. Like to me, they told me, well, if you don't do this, you don't have chemo, it's going to be in your bone and your vital organ. Um, th those are stressful things that you're being told. Mm -hmm. This the scary stuff that you got to deal with and that's what I was saying you put it away you have to only think positive remove the stress remove the pressure remove the fears mm -hmm. um, facing death in a peaceful peaceful way kind of mm -hmm. and not being afraid of it and and wanting to live and wanting to succeed I guess it's it's hard to do for a lot of people mm -hmm. and you have to come to terms with it mm -hmm. and um, you have to do that because if you 
just let your emotion go and lose control. You can't think straight mm -hmm. and you let other people decide for you and take control of your life and your body. Mm -hmm. And um, you need to get a grip and calm down mm -hmm. and think straight because you have important decision to take when you're facing something like a cancer diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just really taking control of your own health and, and making the decisions for yourself and not, you know, not putting it out on letting other people make decisions for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I imagine uh, that you, a strong support system was probably important for you as well. Is that right? Well, um, I met my boyfriend at the, uh, a conference for epilepsy in mm -hmm. Chicago last mm -hmm. September. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, the same way. Mm -hmm. And... Um, also himself, his life was saved by the ketogenic diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, online, he became friends with um, the Dr. D'Agostino that I told you from USF. Mm -hmm. And um, that's this doctor that put him in the path for ketogenic diet, and mm -hmm. that helped save his life. And yeah. also a friend of his, um, Adam, from bodybuilding. And because um, the bodybuilders, they use the ketogenic diet for... Um, you know, getting their muscles out and right. losing fat right. um, in the body. Right. And, um, so his life was saved. And having him with me eating the same way is just, like, amazing because there's not so many people that don't go to the restaurant most mm -hmm. of the time and mm -hmm. that, um, you know, nitpick on every uh, food label mm -hmm. and, and eat the way we do. Mm -hmm. So um, that's been a tremendous help mm -hmm. that this support mm -hmm. right so making sure the people around you are supporting you and in, in the choices you want you're trying to make for your your food and your nutrition and things is important and also um that's a very uh, important point um that you're making because at first uh people were telling you, you can't refuse everything you know the chemo the all this and that and they wanted to make me eat fruits and stuff and uh, a lot of vegetable but I have to keep my ketogenic ratio, so I keep the vegetable um, low, and I, I pick the ones that are uh, lowest in carbs, like, for example, watercress, that's known to be anti-cancer and very low in carbs and mm -hmm. stuff. And um, I eliminated the fruits until my cancer was gone, mm -hmm. and people were like, you need to eat fruits. I'm mm -hmm. like, you need to trust me. I don't want to die. I cannot eat sugar, you know. Mm -hmm. So at first it was difficult, but then... When they saw that I got rid of it naturally and so easily compared to what most people go through, losing their hair, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, having to have uh, shots for um, their blood cells counts that are low, right. being so sick and dying still after mm -hmm. all the stuff and um, never going into remission. So they're like... Um, surprise and actually surprised and um, they would do the same now you know if it would happen to them because mm -hmm. they saw I, I did it successfully mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right yeah that's totally what i'm trying to support people with as well you know it's, you don't have to go through all this suffering and cancer doesn't have to be this you know this terrible experience and you know you mentioned a great thing before too just focusing on the positive how you can be healthy and how you can you know what what you want for your life and and uh, just, you know, even, I think that's, that's great in your story too, just even when people were telling you that what you were doing was wrong and, and you know, having the courage to, to do what you knew was right for yourself, um, you know, that's, that's a really powerful lesson for people as well. Yes, and uh, one person that I, um, that I admire for that is my boyfriend because he was told that he would die without the epilepsy medication. He chose to die, mm -hmm. and he went to the ketogenic diet, mm -hmm. and he's alive. He's mm -hmm. supposed to be dead, and he's medication-free. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, you have to uh, face your fears, and, you know, because the fears, sometimes they block you from doing anything and, and succeeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you mentioned before too about the emotional and, and spiritual component. What was what was that like for you in your kind of journey with cancer? Um, my uh, niece gave me a CD from Wayne Dyer, 
Um, it's one that it's morning and night meditation mm -hmm. that I love. Mm -hmm. um, it shows you how to meditate and at the same time, it makes you do the exercise and makes you breathe. Mm -hmm. And again, breathing gives you oxygen. Right. It's making your body alkaline. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my favorite because it makes you relax. It makes you think positive. It makes you... Um, project, seeing what you were just talking about, um, seeing what you want to happen, seeing yourself healthy and stuff. And um, the breathing calms you down, gives you oxygen. And um, that was my favorite for the making me positive and making me um, meditate mm -hmm. and, and at the same time oxygen my body and just focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. That was... Um, very helpful. Okay. I love that CD. Yeah. Do you know the name of the CD? Or? It's, um, I think it's called something Morning and, um, do you have it here? Let's see, I'll, I, I can look it up. It's, uh, we've got it there. I got it here. Oh, there it's, it is. Um, meditation for Manifesting. Okay, great. Morning and Evening Meditation to Literally Create Your Heart's Desires. Uh huh. So it's good for anything, for disease or for if you want, you know, something in your life, joy or whatever. Right. Uh, me, I used it for health. Right. And uh, breathing, he shows you how to, it's a technique where you breathe in all the way in and out and you do it at the same time as the CD because a lot of CDs, you, you just um, listen mm -hmm. to a CD. Yeah. This one is... You listen and you do it at the same time with him. So that's what I liked. Okay, great. You're not pa passive, you're active. Right, right, right. Right. And <laughs> breathing and meditation is so important for just being present and, and not, you know, when you have all these fears that can come up, that's that's a great way to, to really get rid of, you know. Let go. Let go of just those. Concentrate on your breathing and what you want. Mm -hmm. And, um, it just you feel lighter after you mm -hmm. feel, and really tapping into that tapping into that vision of your ideal health as well. Yeah. It it gives you a, a path to continue thinking or follow in your thoughts mm -hmm. and your mind. Mm -hmm. So it puts you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah, well, this is this has been some great information so far, and um, I guess you know, do you have any kind of final advice for for maybe a guy who's just recently been diagnosed with cancer? Um, just don't panic. Mm -hmm. You need to put your thinking cap on. Uh, it's the most important thing to do. Mm -hmm. And food, like you just said, is the most important. Mm -hmm. Changing, cleaning your food and the water um, that you drink because you need a lot of water in your body to eliminate toxins and stuff. Mm -hmm. And your quality of water is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so making sure you're eliminating all the fluoride and all the chlorine and all that stuff in the water. Don't let anybody stress you. Try to stay calm under pressure, mm -hmm. under all the stress. Mm -hmm. Just got to think, stay calm, and you got to clean your food. You, you need to act and take the right decision because the decision you take and you make, that's what puts you alive. Mm -hmm. Right. And making sure you have the support network around you and making sure you're taking care of your own needs and that people around you are supporting supporting you as well. Very important. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, well, this has been great. And I would definitely encourage everybody to check out your book. Um, again, that's called The Canton Ketogenic Diet, C-A-N-T-I-N. -N. And I will uh, link to it as well in with this recording. But uh, thank you so much, Elaine, for... for for uh, for telling me about your story, and I know us us dudes, we can we can learn a lot from a from an intelligent lady like you. So well, I can learn from you too. <laughs> it's it's um, give and take. Everybody learns from each other, and uh, it doesn't matter what color you are, what sex you are. Mm -hmm. We all want the same. All we all want to be healthy, mm -hmm. and um, for children, it's for adults. It's when you're sick, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. You just, everybody wants the best for everybody. Right. 
Yeah, we'll definitely check out the book. Elaine also has a Facebook group of the same name, The Canted Ketogenic Diet for Cancer, Type 1 Diabetes, and other ailments. So you can uh, join that group as well on Facebook. And uh, thank you so much, Elaine. And, and I look forward to, to keeping in touch with you and, and hearing about your continued journey. Thank you. I look forward to uh, keeping in touch with you too. Good All right. Thanks a lot. Great.